You are about to enter the Chrome Dome. Alright, Chrome Domers, welcome to the Hand of Merlin. So, this is a game which is just releasing uh, tomorrow, which is the 14th of June, and 1.0. It's been in early access for a while. I'm actually recording this on the early access build. And as a brief overview, it's a roguelike uh turn-based tactical game which has a very unique uh great story very unique character building with a lot of randomness so it's not just pick the best abilities every time so uh a lot of unlocks and a lot of different worlds to travel to to complete the game so this particular video is for those of you who are just getting started, some of the hints and tricks to get you through the early part of the game, get things unlocked, and get you really into the mode of enjoying the game and getting past all the easy, uh, frustrating things at the very beginning. So, first of all, there is essence in the game. They are shards that you collect as you go through the game. You will not start with any. The essences unlock spell, spells that you can use uh, with your characters. And worth noting, the three rings here, you see this, the, this is the, the center ring. The first ring here, the second ring around the outside here, and the, the middle and the third ring around the outside. You get to use one spell from each ring. So... You want to take your first three essences and buy one spell for them from the, the 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 inner ring, one from the middle, and one from the outer, because that'll get you the most spell the most spell slots to use. Uh, after that, you can go back and buy other stuff. So you notice here I picked up Black Hole Warp and Restoration. Um, you can pick anything you want in those spots, but that's the direction that I went with it. Second thing to note is as you're coming into the game, you'll be able to pick your characters. It's not super obvious how you pick a character. You don't drag them, you don't click them, you double click them. That is what selects your character. Um, the second thing to note about selecting characters is what are the attributes and what do they mean. Health, armor. Health is, you lose all your health, you die. Armor replenishes between each fight, health does not. So uh, more armor is good and it will give you additional uh you know you know survivability as you go through but it replenishes between fights super important to keep in mind power is how much damage you do every all of your skills are based off of your power you'll see down here slash deals one times power so power five it does five damage power six it does six damage some of your things do uh you'll see down here with the bash skill if blocked deal 0.5 times power so five power is two damage six power is three damage there because it's only doing half power um range is how far away you can hit 1.5 means you can hit people that are catty corner to you that are that are in a and not directly in front of you one to the left or one to the right uh movement is how many hexes you can squares you can move evasion is a 10 percent chance to miss you can stack this up to the point of getting zero percent chance to hit very important to note, there are some builds out there that you'll see and some skills that allow you to really stack evasion to 6, 7, 8, 10, 10 points. Uh, it's rare for other people to have bonuses to hit, so evasion is very, very effective as a damage mitigation skill. Your characters will have two starting skills, they will have two passive effects. When you start the game, your options will be Brunor, Merwin, and Morgan as your three characters. Um, I'll talk about their skills in a, in a different video of how, to, how, how they work together and that kind of stuff. But worth noting that those are the three only three choices you have. The next thing to note in this screen is to unlock a hero, if you mouse over it, it will tell you what you need to unlock them. Um, I've already unlocked some of these so you can't see all of them, but take a look at all the characters and note there's one of them that unlocks by buying four relics. There's one of them that unlocks by... Um, uh, heal, uh, doing 20 damage. There's another one that unlocks by healing 20 damage of armor. So uh, pay attention to what the unlocks are as you go through this. Uh, one thing I did not mention, let me see if I can go back. Yes. Over here, these are the different worlds that you have. 
So this is uh, uh, different cores that you can explore the worlds of. Um, it's worth noting how you unlock these. Arcana nodes to meet this guardian receive their core. Uh, visit uh, in Jerusalem to progress towards locking this core. Uh, investigate arcane nodes to meet this guardian. Uh, save a doom world to receive the core, uh, etc. So worth noting uh, how that particular system works. Next thing to talk about, once you've got your party, you've got everything set up, you've got your passive effects, be sure to pay attention to them. They are very, very important of how the characters work together. When you get into the game, there is a, an adventure path type of thing here. Stop talking. Okay, so there's an adventure path thing. You can't zoom at all here, but if you'll notice, in the upper left-hand corner, there is a button right here that says Shawl All Node Labels. If you find it overwhelming to have them all there, you can just bounce over them and see what's coming, or you can have them all set up when you want to plan your route. There is no backtracking, so plan your route of where you want to go. As you, as you may remember, we just talked about how to unlock cores. These are the arcane nodes that we were talking about. You go through these. Anything that says it has essence, you can only get essence from that node once, no matter how many times you play through the game. So um, each of the nodes can give it only one time. There's an arcane node there. There's a stone hinge down here. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, Castle of Maidens. All these have unique situations to them that you'll want to take different paths as you go through the game. You'll play through these areas. There are four maps in the game. Um, the fourth map is the final map. It's a much, much smaller map than the other three. So keep that in mind as you're progressing through the game, how close you are to the end, etc. Um, as you're moving through. Something else to really pay attention to in this map. Heroic nodes. They will give you something to help you as you move forward in the game. If you have lost a character, you only have three in your party, but if you lose one, he goes to zero health, they are dead, there's no resurrecting them. You'll get a replacement random hero in Heroic Node, guaranteed. So make sure you have those in your path that you're planning out because you're gonna wanna have that option just in case somebody dies. And if you don't get that, you can see, as I moused over it here in the corner, gear upgrade, black mix service, or hero. Heroes first, and then uh, it's a good chance for you to get something else. Herognos are a great way to get your characters leveled up. Um, the other thing that you will notice here is they have gear upgrades. You can buy these, they give you more hit point, uh, more armor, more evasion, more power, lots of things that are very helpful to stack up uh, with your upgrades. Generally, you buy those with money, but you can also get them as rewards um, or a discounted uh, uh, cost. So keep out, keep that in mind. That's what money's for. Renown. Every 50 renown gives you a level up on your character. Let's talk about that quickly. You start with two skills. The third and fourth skill will come at level two and three. They are, you get a random pick from three. You want those to mesh somehow. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when you're building your character is you have two action points a turn. You'll notice your primary skill has a cooldown of one, which means you can only use it once per turn. You want to make sure to quickly get a second skill that allows you to do two damage dealing actions a turn. Depending on the character you're playing and how it sets up, you'll notice like Merowyn over here, Merowyn over here has Archer's Vigil really cool skill uh, takes a reaction shot and it's not just one shot it's at everything that moves within her line of sight she deals three damage to but it's on a three turn cooldown so on the turns when Marin who's a ranger and his range has a range of uh, six here whenever uh, she shoots things she shoots here but she doesn't have a second skill and her power is only three, by the way. Very important to keep in mind. Uh, so she shoots once, but she doesn't have a second skill. So you want to, one of her first things you want to obtain 
is a second skill that she can use when she's standing still and shooting twice. Um, same thing for Morgan. His second skill is on a two-turn cooldown, and he heals armor, uh, which is a nice skill to have. Not super, super important, but his main skill, Singe, only has a, has a one-turn cooldown. So you'll want a second skill when he can stand still and shoot things at range. He has a range of five. Um, Bruno or not as important because he's going to be moving after things, and he starts with two skills. You might want to pick him up a defensive skill. But do make sure you have two skills that you can use when you need to do double damage because they will move next to you, and you'll need to kill things. So, uh, as I said, Renown, every 50, 50 Renown gets you a level, and levels up. Level 2 and level 3 get you your, your two skills. Uh, at level 4, you get to pick a upgrade to your skills. Um, one thing to note about upgrades, when you're offered the upgrades, you're offered them on all four skills. You can pick any one of the four skills to upgrade. Whatever those upgrade offers are will not change between levels. So don't be like, oh, I don't really like the upgrade I got for Slash. I'll wait till next level and get a different one. It's going to be the same one offered every time. So generally speaking, whatever, whatever the most impactful uh, uh, upgrade is, that's what you should use. So um, storage for your uh, relics. One thing to remember, never, ever sell the grail. You lose. It doesn't tell you that in the game. It says, are you sure you want to do this? This cannot be undone. But it doesn't tell you if you sell it, you lose. Don't sell it. Even though it's worth like 150 gold and it seems like a really cool idea, don't do it. Just say it. Um, this is mana that you use to cast spells with. Uh, essences that you'll gain over the course of the time. Food is your rations. You use one per node as you move. If you have food, you get um, bonuses. Uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're well, well supplied or well fed or whatever. Um, and, uh, but if you don't have food, you'll be un not well supplied or starving. You get negatives. So you want to make sure you have enough supplies to get through. Uh, it comes pretty easily. It's fairly cheap to buy. A lot of places you can buy them for 20 gold for three, three, three supplies. But make sure to keep an eye on your supplies and don't sell them if you can, um, etc. So the other thing is cities. So cities are great. They're a really nice way to pick up if you have a lot of gold, path through a city, pick up some relics or some armor or weapon upgrades. But worth noting is that when you get to the end here, and you have to fight, this is a besieged city, which means that it's gonna, you have to fight to get through it. Um, after you finish and win this combat, you will get a chance to buy supplies at a discount. So well worth saving your money so you can get the 20% discount and buy more stuff if you can. If you're getting crushed, then obviously go to a city and buy now. Another thing to note, where did it go? I just saw it. Here it is. Occasionally you will see a uh, node that says new quest on it. There is a chance here to gain a quest. The quest will be finished in a future chapter. You'll have to look for it. And you'll say say this is, uh, you know, Barstan's quest. Uh, you'll pick it up. When you get to the next area, there'll be a node that says Barstan's quest. Um, so you have to look for that in your layout and make sure you path towards it because it gives a really good reward generally. Um, as I mentioned, you will want to hit these nodes as you do your playthroughs. Um, do not feel bad about starting on easy. Unlocking a few classes, unlocking uh, some information about the game, getting used to it, getting that first win under your belt so you know all the mechanics. The final fight has a very interesting mechanic. I won't spoil it, but I will tell you to make sure that you, at the end of map three and at the end of map four, go into the fight with full mana. Your mana caps out at five in hard mode, I mean in normal mode, seven in easy mode. Make sure it's at full, you will need it. I won't spoil anything else beyond that, but you know that's all, that's all I'll say about it. Um, these things here, if you bounce over it, single exclamation mark is well, a green exclamation mark means no combat. You can see it here. You can see the city of Carcelon. No chance of combat. Uh, orange single question mark or exclamation mark means chance of combat, not super hard. Double exclamation mark means chance of combat, extra hard. Regular nodes will, well, nodes in general will generally have human enemies. Corrupted nodes will generally have 
non-human enemies. They are slightly harder, um, they have more devastating abilities, corruption, and that kind of stuff, just more annoying than anything else. Um, but it's worth paying attention to uh, when you get to like this regular note here is corrupted, and you can see there's a timer up here uh, for this one's going to be corrupted. And there's one of the character unlocks that requires you to kill 10 humans with a warrior. And so you want to hit the normal nodes uh, that aren't corrupted so that you can get the human kills to try to get that guy unlocked. I have not been able to do it yet, but, you know, keep working on it. Um, those are the major gotchas or things to note about things. Upgrade your weapons. More damage, more evasion. Uh, well, upgrade everything for the most part, but power is king in my opinion. You get this power up to 8, 9, 10 really makes a difference and you're not going to gain much from level ups. The other thing to talk about is level ups. On your level up, not only are you going to get a skill to pick from or, or upgrade, you will also get a choice of a stat to increase. Um, the Most of the levels that you level up on will give you plus two health or plus one armor. It's your choice which one you pick. I generally pick health because yes, armor regenerates and it's nice to have more of that as a base, but there are things which attack directly to health and I do not want to die. I have had people die from 25 or 30 hit points all the way to zero in one round that I couldn't heal them. And so more health is great and it gives you that just a little bit of, of safety net just in case uh, you run into the wrong situation of corruption and poison and, and other things like that coming at you. Um, don't forget there is a codex over here that has all kinds of information about what you have unlocked uh, over the course of time. And uh, apparently that's, I didn't notice that. There's a estimation mark right here on the side if you're, when you're scrolling, if you're like, oh, is there, is there any quests around here? There's that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so any other questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any of them. Um, I'm sure the devs will be around as well and will be happy. I'm happy to reach out to them and get any questions you have need to, be, need to have answered. Uh, for the most part though, play the game, have fun with the game. <laughs> learn the game you will enjoy it um i really find it interesting to try to make figure out how are these characters going to work you get offered the three skills at the first time and you're like well what do, how do i build this guy uh there's one character that does health damage directly uh in melee but how do you get them up there and make, make sure they can do that and uh increase their power uh, there are other things that allow you you'll get two action points per turn But there's ways to get three and four action points a turn and that makes a huge difference anything you can do to gain action points um, you'll notice uh, uh, the one of the upgrades to the shoot skill here is that when you kill somebody it gives you an action point back so many really nice things that you can do um, and it's really fun to see how is this particular group going to work together how are you going to put these things together? Figuring out the right combinations and how to get past things. Um, the guys you're fighting have a ton of hit points and a ton of armor. And it does take some coordination to take them down. But on the flip side, they're the AI. And they only make so many good decisions. So any questions, feel free to hit me up. And I will see you on the battlefield for Hand of Merlin.